Hi, this is Mr. Van Scoy. Welcome to the lesson on scientific perspectives and thinking, part of the science and engineering practices. Start with a quote here. Science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge. Carl Sagan, who was um, kind of a, he was an astronomer and TV personality, um, famous, famous for his Cosmos series. Um, science really is based on the analysis of observations made either through our senses or using special scientific tools. Um, and in this lesson, we're going to take a look at really means um, to kind of a scientific view of the world. So when you're done, that's, um, you should be able to explain what it is to have a scientific view of the world. In science, um, there are many paths. Uh, a scientific investigation has, a, has specific, specific features about it. For example, asking questions, making a hypothesis, and so on. And these features are often presented as, a, as steps to younger students by teachers. I've been guilty of that too. Um, but science, is not, science does not always follow a fixed set of steps when attempting to discover the answer to scientific questions. There's no single path that leads to scientific knowledge. And kind of talking about success here by John D. Rockefeller, a quote, if you want to succeed, you should strike out on new paths rather than travel the worn paths of accepted success. And I think um, that's kind of meant to be success in life, life or business, but I think that also applies in science. Science is not just a profession. There are lots of investigations for what we call citizen scientists, that is um, collecting data by non-professionals. You do not have to be a professional scientist to think like a scientist either. And I will say, uh, too, uh, in our slides, I'll put some links to these different projects here. So again, it involves a kind of a thinking or a way of looking at the world. Deduction and induction. Everyone can use certain features of scientific thinking to analyze issues and situations in everyday life. Inductive reasoning and, and deductive reasoning um, are logical ways of looking at the world. With deduction or deductive reasoning, it involves determining a concluding statement from one or more general statements. Um, and its accuracy kind of depends on the, the statements that it arises from. Induction or inductive reasoning involves determining a general statement that is a probable um, outcome based on several facts. Let's take a look at a couple examples. All humans are mortal. Albert Einstein is a human. Conclusion. Albert Einstein is mortal. Another logical um, series here, this one from philosopher David Hume. The sun has risen in the east every morning up until now. Conclusion, the sun will also arise in the east tomorrow. Okay. Our first one here, um, this is going to be our deductive And our second one here is going to be an inductive. Science is a process for developing knowledge and Change in knowledge about the natural world is expected because there's often room for new observations which may challenge our current views. And no matter how well one theory explains a set of observations, it is possible that a different theory may explain them just as well or better um, or may en encompass a wider range of observations. Our understanding is getting better. Scientists are always testing and attempting to improve theories. Scientists know that even if there's no way to gain complete knowledge about something, an increasingly accurate understanding of nature will develop over time, kind of as our understanding and our technology both improve. The ability of scientists to make 
progressively more accurate predictions about the natural world, provides evidence that scientists are gaining an understanding of how the world works. Science cannot answer all questions. There are beliefs that cannot be proved or disproved with scientific investigations. Sometimes questions answered scientifically are rejected by people um, who hold to certain beliefs, regardless of what the data um, shows. Uh, scientists do not have the means to settle moral questions, but they can sometimes contribute to the discussion by identifying possible consequences or likely reasons for certain actions by humans. And there, um, a lot of times, um, especially in the life sciences, scientists even study things like bioethics, kind of the, the ethics of making certain decisions based on um, kind of biological information. All right, um, these are some additional topics and lessons um, that we'll be looking at kind of throughout the semester. Um, these fall on, all fall under the umbrella of science and engineering practices. Um, I'll let you um, take a look at those and read those on your own. You can always come back to this slide. Um, and again, I'll have some lessons posted on these um, as they become relevant. Okay, so um, now you should be able to explain what it means to have a scientific view of the world, um, how science is really a way of thinking much more than a body of knowledge. Again, quoting from Carl Sagan really sums that up nicely. Um, you know, using those reasoning skills and using scientific methods for our investigations, but also understanding that it's really not just a series of steps. Um, and also um, kind of have a preview of our science and engineering practices that we'll be um, looking at and using throughout this course. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to talk to me or look at our other resources.